Good morning, folks. If you can get past how ugly the guy on the screen is, trust me, he's got some interesting things to say, and sometimes three to five minutes in the morning news just isn't enough time. Red Ice Creations was kind enough to let me share some words and time with our friends in Sweden. The interview is completely in English. They've also recently interviewed Dave Talbot and a number of other interesting folks. Highly recommend you checking out their website. It's linked below. Wow. That's a first for me. We did similar sulfur type experiments in the lab if I can remember back that far, but I didn't think it actually worked like that at volcanoes. This is stunning. Folks, many of you know that the sun was eclipsed from the SDO spacecraft's point of view yesterday. This happens on schedule, I've probably seen about a dozen or so of those, and the way to tell if it's the Earth or Moon is that Earth's atmosphere creates that fuzzy edge to Earth with light barely penetrating the air while the Moon leaves a nice sharp line to be discerned. Yesterday, it was the moon. To kick it to weather, we'll start with the worst drought in recorded history for California. Very, very extreme. We do have a significant storm developing at Mozambique, but it'll have to wait. I was wrong yesterday about being wrong the day before. The storm did get its name. Local weather shares in the comments for this one are appreciated. Low off New Zealand should actually stay put for now as well. Let's come to Europe. We see a high pressure cell driving northward in central and eastern Europe matches the northward flow off the convergence line formed by the North Atlantic low. The weather will intensify, but at least it should be a bit warmer. Make that a double for the U.S., but first eye the lows out in the Pacific, weakened but trying to get themselves organized for another push. The old wind map best reveals the warm-up coming to the east. It's very much a welcome visitor. Let's take a look at our current conditions. Solar wind is calming now, density and speed finding ambient space weather levels with no geomagnetic instability. Flaring took the night off after a big stretch in the middle of the day. The M6.6 .6 solar flare occurred at the big incoming active regions. Intensity gram, Doppler gram, can't match the impressive nature of the magnetogram, especially with the magnetic mesh potential at the center of the big umbra. Got a couple delta candidates, but I'm comfortable calling one of them the leader. Just below the largest umbra, we see deep color mix. It would take something unthinkable for that to remain silent today. The M6 blast indeed was close to the limb, but the heliospheric pressure is so low with this long-term magnetic shutdown of our star that a big, broad, buckshot-style ejector released in full halo style. Both Enlil spirals believe impact to Earth will take place, but both are a little soon in my mind. I'm thinking late on February 2nd, about 12 to 24 hours after NASA and NOAA are currently predicting. Coronal hole situation about to shift from positive in green to negative in red. The shift is occurring as we speak, the incoming openings turn this way, and as the coronal fields dance the day away. First ones will be weak, but the big ones are behind them. Grease's aftershocks are starting to look like foreshock activity, Shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.